G'day. Well, this is a little bit of all right, isn't it? I feel uh, like quite the captain here in my American-made captain's chair today, running on autopilot. Beautiful afternoon. Anyway, it's test drive time. Dan Jones is my name. I'm from the boat brokerage, and today uh, we're on a really cool boat. Uh, we're on a Boston Whaler, 315 Conquest. And uh, this is my first rodeo when it comes to Bostons. I, I really enjoy every time I get to have a play with one of these things. They are, uh, they do things a little bit differently in America. Um, and for those that are looking for this, you will appreciate it. They build their boats a bit heavier. They build them exceptionally well and um, they build them with reliability and longevity in mind. And, and uh, that's, that's absolutely the case with the Boston brand as a whole. Um, and the Conquest uh, as, as, as a, a series or, or as a model range for the Boston Whaler, they uh, meet a couple of nice niches, so to speak. There's the obvious one, it's the fishing. Um, and you know the current owner has definitely enjoyed his fishing on this. And if you want to see the equipment in more detail, uh, subscribe to the channel and I will be filming a walkthrough which will be a separate video coming to this. But in terms of the, the other niche that these boats really, really seem to meet, it's just people wanting weather protection. You know, these boats make a great harbour day boat. They make a great coastal adventurer. You've got this wonderful wraparound glass. You've got an awesome view from this solid captain's chair that we got here and you've got accommodation. Um, so you, you've got a toilet and shower, you've got two, two beds downstairs and this beautiful big back deck here which, you, which lends itself to um, you know, a lot of entertainment situations as well as your fishing. And you know what? Open it up from there. Um, all sorts of ac other activities would be doable on a boat like this. Uh, anyway, you didn't come here for the activities, you came here for the driving experience, so let's uh, give it to you. Um, before we get there, what do we have here at the helm? Um, beautiful big chair, flip up bolster, armrests flip up, these things are built to last. Look at that stainless there, that's great to see. Um, and this seat swivels, it goes, it goes forward and back and it swivels around. So it's gonna, um, you know, when you're in social situation, it'll swivel as well. I'm going to uh, just leave it, uh, I'm just going to stand whilst I, I do this drive because we do have a few uh, afternoon rowers on the water here, all the private schools are out, so I don't want to piss any of them off or I will try not to anyway. Um, so starting my way uh, on the starboard side working around the helm, what do I have? I got um, two drink holders here and here, I got a phone charging socket that looks like um, dual USB, sorry, a, a uh, 12 volt socket and an AUX and then a little knick-knack storage area here. I've got the VHF just behind me on my right arm. Um, key start, uh, dual barrels just here and here and then we've got the digital throttle um, and, and a, in a very natural position uh, for your throttle hand which is obviously going to be the right hand on this boat. Um, forward of that this just seems to be a really logical place to put your phone. Uh, but you've got a flat surface area, which, which does seem sensible for that. Two air conditioning outlets. This boat does have a generator and air conditioning. Um, so if you want to keep it wrapped up, uh, it's totally possible to do that and uh, enjoy the aircon. In saying that, you've got these removable clears, but these are the high quality ones. So these are the ones that you can see through all the time. You can't roll them. There's a specific place to put them away uh, in, in the ceiling just here because you have to leave them flat. Um, so that's, that's a great little option there. Um, I'm just gonna move to starboard so we don't annoy those kitties. Two more drink holders, because you can never have enough drink holders, which is great. Um, your water, uh, sorry, your boat systems just here. You've got a high water alarm and all your systems from your horn, your lights, your spreader lights, your windshield vent. So you do have uh, a forward facing vent, which will suck a little bit of air in, which is, is nice if you don't want to go straight to the air con. Uh, windscreen wipers, accessories, bilge pumps, and you can operate the anchor uh, from the helm as well. Um, I've got dual Raymarine hybrid touch displays, these ones. So they are touch screens, but they've got 
the um, they've got the buttons on the right hand side now I like that setup because it just means that um, when you've got wet fingers you can still operate them so I've got it currently on the engine diagnostics on one side and the chart plotter on the other obviously being a serious fishing boat this one means um, you could flip that around and put your radar on uh, have your chart on obviously your sounders uh, for all you, all you serious fishos as well um, in the middle of the display I've got the Raymarine autopilot it's like any autopilot you see on a yacht um, you've got 10 degrees up and down you can do small increments in, in one degrees um, starboard and auto so on and off um, we then have our permanent engine diagnostic screen just here so that's uh, that's always on that's going to give you engine diagnostics and a regular feed out of information from I've got it on engine revs at the moment I can see my fuel and other data as well spotlight control here bow thruster it is a, a powerful bow thruster so that is something you always want to check on boats um, this one's good plenty of power fusion control the main head units downstairs but you can do control from here and then just up here, we've got an air conditioning control and your main VHF uh, box just there. I do have, just looking around me, I've got a, um, an EPIRB just mounted uh, overhead just here. I've got some down lights, two speakers facing aft, um, and that, that sort of completes it for the helm situation just here. Um, now we'll talk about the driving. Um, geez, there's kids everywhere. This is gonna be interesting. We'll see how we go with this. Uh, I'm just gonna deactivate auto. Um, the steering position, it's comfortable and it's interchangeable. So I, if I wanted more room, um, I can slide this seat back. Um, if I wanted, um, if I wanted uh, to, to less room, I can slide it forward. I've got the footrest as well. Beautiful big stainless steel uh, steering wheel with a Boston Whaler logo embossed in the middle. And it's got the little knob for steering, which I tell you what, is really handy when you're coming in and out of a marina situation. Now this boat, it's not anti-fouled. It lives in a sea pen and always has. So it's got a beautiful clean bottom and it remains that way. And this wheel is adjustable just here and here. Um, the power itself, it's the Verados, Mercury Verados. They are the six cylinder twin 250s. Um, in terms of uh, displacement, can't remember actually. <laughs> I have to check the inventory for that. But you can feel the boat is sizable you can feel it has a little bit of weight uh, under the keel it's not uh, you know it's not one of those lighter build boats that um, uh, that you probably see me uh, testing a lot of the time this thing is built differently and it's built for a different purpose so it is a heavier layup um, so I'm just gonna try and get a little bit of pace up um, and then I'm hoping that's the last rowing boat and then I can get it on the plane without having any school teachers chasing me down in tinnies. Um, so what am I doing? Uh, revs wise, I am sitting on 1,700 revs. I've got 660, 670 litres of petrol in the tank. Uh, and those, but that 1,700 revs is giving me a speed return of 6.8 knots. I've got the engine trim all the way down, just double check that, and I've got the bow uh, the trim tabs, sorry, all the way up. Now I will be doing a little bit of tri trim uh, on both engines and tabs throughout this drive. Um, and, and you will too, if you're shifting your weight, uh, fuel people equipment on a boat like this and conditions like any boat, um, it's, it's definitely something you need to consider. So we'll just go. So at that speed, we're making moderately acceptable wash. Um, that looks like it's borderline. We'll just wind it up a, a little bit over seven knots and we'll see what we create. Okay, so I'm bringing my revs through 1900 and climbing, just getting to 2000 revs on both motors. Um, and that brings me to 7.5 knots, 7.5 knots SOG. And I don't have a fuel flow on this currently. I'm sure I do within the system, but I uh, I can't see. And you know what? That wash is not going to be acceptable for those kids. So I'm just going to dial it down. Jeez, kids, can't you go row somewhere else? Don't you know I'm trying to film a video of a Boston Whaler? <laughs> sorry, sorry, private school kids. No, please, do what you got to do. I love rowing. I used to row too. 
Okay. Let's pass these girls in the quad. And now let's give it some speed. Here we go. So we'll get back to 2000. All right, rolling through 2000 and up to 2500 now. 2500, I can see the bow raise um, slightly. I'm definitely making a bit of wash there now. So that's completely not acceptable and no wash zone. And I'm getting 8.8 .8 knots. So really, this is the point. If you go any faster, you're just gonna drag your bum. So if I bring it up a little bit, um, you know, 2700, I'm making big wash now. I'm only getting nine knots. So you just should get it on the plane. So I'm rolling through 3,500, 3,700, 4,000 revs. Engine still in the down trim position. I haven't done any trim tabs. I'm just gonna test this one out and see how it feels. And we're rolling through 22 knots SOG now, 23 knots SOG. The revs have come up to 4,500 and didn't really feel in this flat water I needed any um, trim tabs. I've got a moderate bow raise, but nothing nothing that would worry uh, anyone, even people as short as I. So that's giving me a constant speed of 27 knots now at 4,500 revs. I'm gonna give the engine trim a little tad up. So that just gives me 4,600 revs with about a degree of trim up on the motors. And there we can see our speed going to 27, now 28 knots. So that's a definite improvement. We are in flat water today. Um, so I'm just gonna do a gradual turn. Um, just keeping an eye out for any more kids on rowing, skulls, no, we're clear, Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna go wide to these fishermen and I'll open her up down the straight here. So I feel like this boat's, this feels like a good cruise speed to be honest, so 4,500 revs, the motors aren't working too hard there. You know, once you pop 5,000, you generally start to uh, send the fuel flow, the fuel flow through the roof a little bit. So that's probably a good, um, a good number to sit on. And that speed return at 27, 28 knots, that's really acceptable. So let's, uh, let's just wind that up a little bit. 4,800, 4,900, that's giving me 30 knots there, no problems. Um, the pickup's quite nice. I feel like she wants a little bit more trim there on the motors. Okay, that's giving me five grand. I'm getting 31, uh, now 32 knots. I'm not wide open throttle there. We'll just give the boat, you, you can feel the displacement. You know, she feels solid. This, I just feel like I could take on anything in this boat. These turns are quite comfortable. It's not, I wouldn't say it's sporty, it, it feels, like a big boat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the uh, engines in a second because I'm running out of water and I'm gonna do a hard turn at pace. So I've got no boats behind me. And then on the way back up, we're gonna try full speed. Okay, coming in, trimming down, outboard engine, increasing power, maintaining that turn. I'm doing that turn at 27 knots. I'm not losing visibility, and even from the standing position there, that's, that feels quite comfortable. We're gonna go back into our wash, and we'll just feel that one out, okay? Still at 27 knots. Gonna take the wash from the bow on. Three, two, one. Oh my God. Was, was that wash? Come on. Is that all you can do? Okay, so this thing handles it no problem. Um, now let's just give it some wide open. Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, this is always fun. Okay, so 33 knots, my revs 5,500. I've done a little bit of engine trim up. I've got no trim tabs, 35 knots and climbing. A little bit more engine trim up, 36 knots. Uh, 36 knots steady and 5,600. Let's give it a bit more, more trim. Okay, 5,700. More trim. Okay, we're climbing to 5,800 and 37 knots. More trim. Okay, this is a 38 knot boat. Wow, these twin 250s, this thing goes good. 
Okay, 5,900. So yeah, we're getting 5,900 revs. I could probably give this a little bit more trim and 38 knots steady there with you know, 600 plus liters on board. I'm gonna have to come off the juice here because these kids are up ahead and I don't want angry school teachers chasing me down. So there you go, that's, um, that's very, very capable. Yeah, this, this, is a, this is a real battle wagon. Um, you know, if you've, got, if you've got adventures in mind, so, you know, if you fancy long weekends in Bermagui, <laughs> you know, explore the south coast, head north, um, fish to your heart's content, or explore to your heart's content. A boat like this, you'll get under bridges. Um, you've got range, you've got capability, you've got weather protection, um, you've got redundancy with the twin engines. So that's, that's all pretty cool. Obviously, she's a fishing weapon. Go and fish your heart out. That's just great. But, you know, if, if you're a, a you know, love a lunch a lot, this is pretty good setup too, with these seats out the back, um, with the option to be in the sun or in the shade, and, and the speed potential um, what did we just learn? You know, cruising at 28 knots is a very achievable number on this boat. 4,500 revs, that's, um, that's good speed return. You know, notch it up a little bit, sit on your 31s, 32s, anywhere where you can do those sorts of speeds uh, or any boat that can do those sorts of speeds just means your area of operations is wider. Um, she can absolutely, we are on flat water today, so I had to try it in some boat wash, but she can absolutely eat up that little bit of chop that we did see. So I'd be, have no qualms driving this thing upwind into some breeze, offshore, downwind, and just feeling the weight and the displacement tells me that it's gonna knock through a bit of bad stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess if that's you, if you can see yourself in any of that description, and if you can see yourself wide open throttle at 38 knots or cruising, cruising down the Broadwater or the Sydney Harbour or the, or the Bay in Melbourne, give me a call. My name's Dan Jones. Follow the link in the description below. This is The Boat Brokerage. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.